Hi there, everyone. Nice to see you. I see we've got about 28 people on the call so far. So thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Lita Blazetti, and I work at the City of Calgary Youth Employment Centre. I did notice a few names that I recognize. So thank you so much uh, for some of some clients and some colleagues that are, are on here. And then there's maybe some of you I haven't met yet. So it's nice to see you all. Today, I've got um, my co-worker, Jen McSween, here. Uh, she's going to be my co-pilot for the event, just to run all the technical side of things. And then our guest is Stephanie Segarek with Shopify. Hello. Uh, <laughs> she is here as well. I'm just going to run down how we're going to work things. Oh, first of all. Actually, I'm going to talk about Youth Employment Center in case you haven't heard about us before. So the City of Calgary Youth Employment Center offers career planning and job search support to any youth age 15 to 24 in Calgary. All of our services for youth are available at no cost. Uh, right now, they're available by appointment and virtually. And you can sign up for an appointment on youthemploymentcenter.ca. Uh, so that's just a little rundown. We also like to support employers like Shopify. Um, so we support a variety of employers in the Calgary area that do hire entry level workers. Um, so with our format today for the event, it's going to be an interview format. So I've got a series of questions that I'm going to ask Stephanie about Shopify as well as the junior support advisor role at Shopify. And um, at the end, you'll have the chance to ask your questions. You can type them in the chat, or we're going to maybe try to grab the mic, um, but maybe don't grab it until we're ready for the questions or else be interrupting everything. Um, so feel free to participate that way. We're going to have some poll questions, and I will offer some prizes for people who um, participate. Uh, okay, well, let's just dive into things then. Okay, Stephanie? Sounds good to me. Okay, can you give us an overview of Shopify? Yes, um, so Shopify is essentially a um, an online platform that allows people, um, entrepreneurs, to create um, their own online stores. Um, so, you know, we have folks, um, merchants, you know, who have well-established businesses who, um, you know, have maybe migrated from another online platform that they have hosted their website on. Maybe they want to kind of revamp things and move over to Shopify for whatever reason. So we have some folks who are, you know, kind of very well-versed in the e-commerce world and online stores and all that kind of stuff. But we also have people who are brand new business owners who are, wanting to start their own business. Maybe they have, you know, a hobby on the side that they kind of do as their side gig at home. Maybe they like to knit or they are, you know, a certain craft that they want to sell and they want to sell online, especially right now during COVID online, you know, online shopping is definitely um, preferred, a preferred way of, uh, of selling and all that kind of stuff. So we see people like that um, coming to Shopify to, to start an online store for the very first time as well. But essentially, yeah, it's the tool um, for folks to be able to create their own online stores. Super. So I guess it's probably been a pretty busy time for Shopify with the pandemic. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's an understatement. It's been, um, yeah, we're, I mean, so many industries have been negatively impacted by COVID, of course, which is just so, you know, um, it's not great. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and it's it's kind of a cool thing to be a part of Shopify, for sure. We're, we're um, you know, kind of booming um, as a result of COVID. Um, but, but it's kind of nice. It's not just um, the fact that Shopify is doing it well. It's that it's the reason why we're doing well and the reason why um, I'm so proud to be a part of Shopify is because we're giving people who have been negatively affected by COVID a second chance to be able to, you know, um, to be able to, uh, sorry, the question popped up in front of me. So I was like, well, um, to be able to, you know, um, maybe, uh, help out, you know, themselves or their families with um, any, you know, income that has lo been lost 
through COVID, you know, maybe they decided to start their own store that they were kind of having and hawing on for a while and then COVID hit and they were kind of forced into that. And we also see, you know, folks who maybe only operated um, in, a, in a physical location or a brick and mortar location. So maybe they had a little shop, you know, that essentially had to shut down because of COVID. Um, we're giving those folks the opportunity to still remain open and still keep their business going just, you know, in a different way online. So, yeah, it's been it's it's a it's a, it's a nice thing to be a part of to kind of help people out during this, you know, very difficult time. For sure. It's been great. Um to see, you know, some of the articles I've been reading about some businesses that, oh, you know, I've been meaning to go online and this kind of gave them the push and they're like, why didn't I do this before? Um, so that's wonderful. Can can you tell us um, a little bit about yourself and your career journey with Shopify? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. So um, I'm coming up on about four years at Shopify. I think my four year shop anniversary, as we call it, um, is in March. So um, which is which is crazy. It, it does not it's one of those things where it feels like that long, but it also doesn't feel like that long at all. Um, so I've kind of worn a few different hats at Shopify since starting. When I first started um, four years ago, I was hired as a support advisor, which is essentially a you know frontline support worker. Um, and we'll kind of get into a little more, uh, a little bit more into that later when we talk about the role and all that. But essentially, um, I, it was an entry level position that I that I got hired for. I was, um, you know, talking to our merchants day and day out, helping them with their, you know, various questions and, and issues that came up with running their stores. Um, so I was in that role for about a year or so, just shy of it. Um, and then I moved on to be part of our um, sort of onboarding um, team. Uh, and I'll kind of get into that a little bit more in detail later as well. But essentially, our um, I was part of our mentoring team. So I was a mentor, uh, which helps folks um, kind of onboard into the shop support advisor role. And then from there, I was a trainer. And then fast forward to today, I've been uh, working with our talent acquisition team for, I guess, probably about six, seven months now, if I'm doing my math correctly. And and what I do is, um, you know, I kind of started with um, helping hire support advisors um, and then sort of got into what I'm doing today, which is uh, managing the junior support advisor program, which is great. So, um, you know, my, my role today basically um, is, you know, um, recruiting folks for the junior support advisor role, uh, you know, screening resumes, doing interviews, going through all that process to get people, um, you know, into the role. So yeah, I've de- definitely been all over the place. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, that's great because that shows how you can move in this, this job. Okay. So can you tell us about then the, the junior support advisor program or role and what that's all about? Yeah. So the Junior Support Advisor program is, is fairly new to Shopify in the grand scheme of things. We we just started hiring for it back, and it was created back in the summer. So um, June, I believe-ish, uh, 2020 is what, kind of when the program started. Um, and it was definitely uh, a program that was created, um, you know, partly as a response to COVID, but also partly as just we sort of recognized the areas of opportunity that we had at Shopify to um reduce the barriers to entry to folks um, who, who wanted to get into a company like Shopify. They wanted to grow their skills um, or, or transfer their skills into sort of the e-commerce or tech space. Um, so essentially, that's why it was created. We wanted to create a, a position that was, um, you know, again, like lower the barriers to entry for folks to get into Shopify um, learn the ropes, gain some new skills, gain some new experiences. And we kind of wanted to mostly, uh, and initially it started off as we were only targeting students. So it was, um, and it still is a three month contract to start. So we kind of initially were targeting students who were sort of, you know, in their summers off from school. Um, and the program was so successful. We had so many folks who who applied and and um, so many great people that came into Shopify as a result that we decided to expand that to include other folks with, um, you know, so folks who are newcomers to Canada, um, you know, anyone who, you know, perhaps folks who are new graduates who don't have the um, experience that they may need for other roles in Shopify or other roles um, that they may apply for. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's essentially what it is. And it's a very similar role 
to the Support Advisor Program. Um, essentially, it is a frontline support role where you are talking to merchants um, and helping them with their various um, you know, uh, um, questions and concerns about their store. Um, so it's a really great opportunity to learn a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, there really is no, the, no end to the, to the types of things you learn in a role like this, um, which is really great. It's a really great opportunity to, you know, um, learn what you're good at, learn what you like, learn what you don't like and things like that. So, yeah. Hopefully that's sure. good enough. Yeah, no, that's great. So that definitely provides us with a basis. Yeah. So one of the things that I, sh- I feel like I should have added in here before I ask this question is, like, you do not have an office in Calgary. Do you have an office? Where do you have an office? <laughs> You're looking at it. Um, yep. So, yeah, so that's a very yeah good thing to bring up. So, um, so Shopify, the company uh, started and is based out of Ottawa. Uh, we do have our sort of head head office there. We do have some other, you know, sort of physical locations around Canada and other parts of the world. But since COVID hit, um, most of the folks working out of those offices have now gone remote uh, for kind of obvious reasons. Um, but having said that, the majority of the folks that work in our support um, sort of department or support umbrella, which would be junior support advisors, support advisors, leadership for those types of roles and whatnot, and myself as well. Um, the majority of folks work remotely. So, you know, um, even before COVID, I would say that a lot of the employees of Shopify work remotely, um, which is great. Yeah. So your office can essentially be in your home, um, which is, you know, sometimes a challenge for some people, depending on their own setup. Um, and, and, you know, their, their situations and stuff, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a great, um, I like it. Some people, you know, have, 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 um, struggles with it, which is totally understandable, but it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of nice. It's nice to be able to, you know, wear your sweatpants to work and no one knows, or, you know, (laughs) go downstairs and make lunch in your own kitchen instead of having to go out and things like that. So yeah, I work remotely and uh, a lot of folks at Shopify do as well. And this role that we're hiring for the junior support advisor would also be a remote role as well. Okay, so since it's a remote role, like, does the do candidates need to have their own computer set up and internet and all of that? Um, so we provide all of the like hardware that folks need to do their job. So we would send out, um, you know, a, a new computer. Um, we use um, uh, Google Pixel Books or Chromebooks. Um, we send out, you know, a monitor, mouse, keyboard. So all of the hardware that people need to do their job, we send out. The only thing that's required as far as like a technical, um, you know, component goes is uh, we do require that folks do have a strong internet connection. Um, so so we don't provide that for them. So if, if the internet's not something that um, folks have, then this may not be the best fit. But, um, but yeah, we, we provide everything else. So strong internet connection is all you need. And then, you know, um, as far as sort of surroundings go, I always like to mention this as well. Um, you know, there could be the future to be taking phone calls. It's not something that's what we're doing right now, but you know, in the in the event that we do start taking phone calls from our merchants, um, you know, a quiet space is is kind of preferred. You know, just to make sure that it's not distracting for you or the merchant type thing. So. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Uh, so that's great to hear for some candidates that maybe don't, all they have is their phone and they yeah. don't maybe have a computer for their home. Yeah. Um, so what is the training process like for the junior support advisor? The training, this is great because I've been a trainer, I've been a mentor, I've gone through the training as a new employee as well. So yeah, I have lots of um, lots of insight into that. So the training itself, um, so, so once a junior supporter, support, junior support advisor gets hired, their start date is essentially their first day of training. So they go through um, four weeks of training um, and it's kind of a split. So, so we have training and we have mentoring and those are kind of two components of what we call the onboarding process as a whole. So the training component is what you kind of start with um, and basically it is um, very sort of theory based work. So you're learning about the platform, uh, you're learning, you know, all the ins and outs of how to use it. Um, you create your own test store, 
um, so you can kind of get that hands-on experience of what it's like to be a merchant and what sort of, you know, um, steps you need to, to go through to get certain things done. Um, you know, you also learn about internal processes, things like that. You know, um, we do some training on um, sort of customer service based things. So like how to have difficult conversations, you know, as this is a frontline support role, you know, sometimes you do have to have difficult conversations with merchants based on, you know, certain um, things that they're going through. So we do do training on that as well, just to make sure that we prepare folks to, to be able to have those conversations and be comfortable with them. Um, so yeah, the first few, few weeks are, are definitely more kind of theory based. It's also when you would be um, learning, uh, you know, about different teams within Shopify. So you'd be introduced to all of the different, you know, if we have like a technical team that you go to for any like troubleshooting for that you meet them and all that um, and the training is a um, you're, you're with a rather large group of people normally it's about 20 to 25 folks to one trainer um, and it is it's not um, it, it is very structured so your trainer will let you know you know what you should be doing there's lots of meetings so it's very kind of like structured um, and then after, I believe it's about three weeks, we move into the mentoring side of things. And this is where you kind of do like half a day of training, half a day of mentoring. And mentoring is great. Mentoring is um, more of the hands-on way of going about things. So we teach you all the kind of like, I like to say like training is when you get your book smarts and, and uh, mentoring is when you get your street smarts because you actually get to be in the role as a, in a mentoring, you get to talk to real merchants, you get to, um, you know, basically do the job. Um, but you sort of have your training wheels on and you have your, your mentor with you, um, helping you through those conversations. So they get to see the conversation as it's happening. You share your screen, let's say you're doing a chat, um, your, your mentor can see everything that's going on and help you through that step by step. So it's really great for like hands on learners and that kind of thing. That's awesome. And then you said that's about a three month process. Uh, uh, no. So four weeks total. Yeah. Okay. Um, and after those four weeks of kind of the training and mentoring blend, then they would move okay. into the role. Okay, great. Um, so how, how do the shift or what's a typical shift for someone who is a junior support advisor? Yeah. So um, for a junior support advisor, program we have what we call a variable um start time actually before i get into that maybe i should talk about the training schedule first because it does oh, vary sure. so the training schedule so those kind of four weeks in training and mentoring is a set schedule um so you are you know it's, a, it's an eight hour shift each day you're there at the exact same time every day and it's a monday to friday schedule once you're out of training and you're into the role, uh, we move into a, a variable schedule. So, um, and this is the same as kind of our support advisors as well. Essentially what it means is your start time would vary anywhere between 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. in your local time zone. So, you know, for, for folks who, I'm assuming it would kind of be mountain time for, for you folks, but you know, if you're in PST, it'd be PST, EST, EST, all that stuff. Um, so what that means is shifts can be anywhere between 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. or um, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, and then kind of anywhere in between that. Um, so that's kind of the shift times themselves. And then also as far as the like the what days you'd be working, that is also a rotation. Um, so we work on what we call rotate, rotate, rotating schedules. Um, there are two, um, which I can maybe I can pop this in the chat or maybe um Lita, we can organize sending this information out to folks, but there are kind of two rotation schedules that you can choose from. Um, essentially, what it would be is, is some, uh, there are some weekends um, that can be included in the schedule on a rotating basis. So it's not like you're going to be working every single weekend. Um, you know, we try to rotate it so that it's fair to everyone and, and you know, our merchants still get supported because, um, uh, you know, businesses never sleep. <laughs> so we do need to make sure that we are there for folks um, with a firm merchants on the weekends and, and during the evening hours and stuff like that. So, yeah. That makes sense. So what, what would someone be doing on their shift? Yeah. How would that yeah. Um, so yeah, talking to merchants <laughs> really is what it is. Um, so for our junior support advisors, um, they are doing um, chats mostly. So you're doing online chats with your merchants. Um, 
and you do up to two chats at a time. And that's something we train you on. We, we do mentoring in, in that as well. And in mentoring, we kind of, um, we call it like ramping up. So we'll get you started on just doing one chat at a time. And then, you know, after a day or two, we move you up to two chats at a time. So it's kind of a gradual process. So we don't just kind of throw you in and expect you to handle two chats at a time all of a sudden. Um, but that is the expectation is two chats at a time, obviously, depending on how busy it is and how, how many merchants are actually needing help. Um, so yeah, you'd be doing chats and helping them with their various questions. Um, and you'd also be doing emails as well. Um, not all at the same time, but, um, but yeah, those are kind of like the mediums we use to communicate with our merchants currently. Um, as I kind of alluded to earlier, we used to do phone calls with our merchants. Um, but when COVID hit, it kind of got a little bit too much for us to handle. It ended up being a negative merchant experience because we couldn't get to all the people in time. So we ended up turning our phones off and just using chats. Um, I don't think that's going to be, it could be a thing in the future, but I think for our junior support advisors, it's safe to say it would mostly just be chats and, um, and emails, especially to start. Um, oh, and there was something else I was going to mention as well about the chats. Oh, right. Um, so one thing I like to mention as well is this role is, um, it's definitely, one of those one of those jobs where you're going to come in each day and like I mentioned, you're going to learn something different each day. Every day you're going to get asked a question that you don't know the answer to. And that's OK. And that's expected. And, and we, we know that that's going to happen. Um, it's really just the nature of e-commerce and tech as a whole. It's always evolving. There's always things that come up that can, you know, result in a question being asked that that maybe our support advisors or junior support advisors don't know the answer to. Um, so I like to kind of point that out because some folks prefer to work in a role where they know exactly what to expect in regards to the questions that are asked, right? They have like a list of questions, they know the answers, they know exactly that what's going to happen. This is not that role. This role is definitely... Um, you know, like I mentioned, you're going to be getting questions you don't know the answers to. So it's really a role for folks who are able to sort of um, roll with those waves a little bit, um, you know, be resourceful, find the answers in the moment, um, ask for help, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I would just kind of like to point that out because um, it's not for everyone when it comes to that kind of thing. <laughs> for sure. Um, and you probably have resource people that can help out as well, I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we definitely don't um, expect folks to, to, you know, to do everything on their own, because the reality is sometimes the questions that get asked are way too technical for, for any, you know, anyone to really even uh, anyone at the junior support advisor level to know. Um, so, yeah, we have lots of different, um, you know, uh, second tier teams that would help. Uh, for questions like that. And you also, uh, when you're working in the role, you have your own little core team as well. We call them squads. Um, so you're with your squad, you have your squad lead, um, and you have a little um, sort of online, um, we use a tool called Slack to kind of communicate with, with everyone in the company. Um, so you have a little Slack channel to kind of communicate with your team and you can ask them for help and stuff as well. So yeah, no shortage of, of resources for help for sure. That's wonderful. Um, so if there's somebody who is interested in this role, what is, how did they apply? Um, yeah, so there is a, um, we have a landing page. So currently our, the job itself is not posted on our careers page. So if you're going to our careers page and looking for the job opportunity, it won't be there. Reason why is because we are currently trying to work mostly with our agency partners to, um, you know, get folks, yeah, get folks, um, you know, from those agencies uh, who, um, you know, really want the opportunity and, you know, are kind of fit within those, um, you know, those types of, you know, groups that we're, we're targeting um, for this role. So, um, so in order to apply, we have a, a specific landing page. Um, that basically you can go to and you can apply via um, via there. Um, it's kind of like a, a direct link to the application um, that you wouldn't be able to get to otherwise. Um, so that and I can actually should I put, paste that in the? I can remind me I can paste that in the comments later if you want. Sure. Um, I've also actually shared it with all of the counselors at the Youth Employment Center. Cool. So any youth that are interested, you know, if you have a counselor already, you can check in with them. And, and if you're not connected already, it's maybe a good opportunity to to connect 
Uh, and then our counselors can actually help make sure you've got that targeted resume uh, for the job and then give you the link to apply. I think it would also be a great idea if you're interested to mention that you attended this event um, because then Stephanie knows that you're really interested and you've done a little bit of research about the company. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. And the, you know, the, the application process itself, um, it's, um, you know, it's pretty straightforward, I suppose, um, in regards to, you know, you'd, you'd upload your resume and all that kind of stuff. Um, there are a, there is a list of questions that you have to answer, uh, for the application as well. Um, and, uh, you know, there is a, a typing test. So as far as like requirements go, there is a typing test that um, we ask you to do uh, to and, and, and basically add your results, um, your words per minute and your accuracy to the application. Um, there is also an optional section um, in the application to do what we call like a build a store challenge, which is where you would um, create a store using Shopify, you could create a free account, a free free trial, create a store. And we ask folks to, um, to, you know, paste their store there. Um, I will just say as sort of like a tip for anyone, because we do get quite a, quite a lot of applicants for this role. And I do see folks sometimes applying and not completing all of the fields. Um, you know, if they see something's optional, they don't do it. Um, because this is so competitive, I would highly recommend you complete every single, um, aspect of the application um, because, you know, obviously if, if, if we see folks that are, are doing that and some folks that aren't, we're going to prioritize the folks that, that do complete the application in full. So just a little tip there. <laughs> um, absolutely. That is a great insider tip. And that's why it's always good to do your research. And uh, this is a great opportunity to come to, to this event and, and find that out. Um, so what is the interview process like? um for this job it is um uh, a lot of fun a lot of fun for me anyway um for sure because well actually i've gotten a lot of feedback that it's a really positive experience for candidates as well so how we conduct shop or how we conduct interviews at shopify um it is a little bit different than than maybe what some people might expect or maybe what some people have experienced in the past with interviews um it's not that traditional uh, format where it's like question, answer, question, answer, that kind of thing. And we don't have questions planned at all. We basically, we refer to our interviews as life stories. So what they are is essentially, um, a, it's more of a conversation than it is, you know, uh, an, an interview or, or, or a question answer cycle. Um, really at the end of the day, what we like to get out of our life stories is we want to get to know the person that, that, you know, we're talking to. Um, resumes are great. Experience is great. But at the end of the day, we want to get to know you as a person. We want to get to know what your passions are. Um, you know, what gets you out of bed in the morning? What sort of, um, you know, adversities or, or, or things you've gone through in your life that have kind of gotten you to where you are today? All that kind of stuff is, is super, you know, important to us at Shopify. Um, we don't just hire a resume. We hire the person. And we want to know, um, you know, what sorts of things that have gone on in your life to kind of make you who you are today. Um, so essentially there's no questions planned at all for, for the, for the interview. You show up um, for your, for your scheduled time, you know, maybe it would be with me, maybe it would be with someone else um, on our interview team. Um, but um, essentially, you know, the person would introduce themselves uh, and they would let you know that, um, basically, the sort of floor or, or the time will be yours as the candidate to tell us your story. Um, you know, we as the interviewers will sort of ask questions along the way. But, you know, again, none of them are planned. The questions will be completely based off of whatever you share with us. Right. So if you say, oh, you know, one time I worked at the mall at this clothing store, like, OK, cool. What, what store? What was that like? You know, so any questions that we ask you you will know the answer to already because it's going to be a part of your life, which is, I think, a really good thing for people to know because it kind of takes away that 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 anxiety or those nerves that like, oh, my God, what if they ask me a question? I don't know. You know what I mean? Um, you're going to know all the answers because it's your life. Um, and uh, and essentially how we kind of do it is we, we ask people to kind of choose, you know, sort of maybe pick a point in the past and then work their way forward up until today. Sometimes folks will prefer to kind of start with what they've been up to lately. 
um, and then work their way back in time. Really, it's whatever kind of makes you the most comfortable and how you like to share your story. Um, yeah, so it's more of a casual conversation. We'll ask questions based on what you tell us. Um, and then kind of at the end, we'll, we'll sort of give more um, information on sort of what to expect and next steps in the process and all that kind of thing. But yeah. That sounds really uh, interesting. There's going to be no formula for answering the questions. Exactly. Yeah. I noticed in the chat, I have a question here from someone named Meg. And I think she's a student right now. So she wants to know if if this is full-time or part-time. Yeah. Um, great question. So it is a full-time position currently. Um, yeah. So 40 hours a week. And again, because of that rotating schedule um, and, and the variable start times, um, if you are a current student that, that maybe doesn't have as much flexibility with your schedule may not be the best fit, at least not right now, um, because we do require folks to kind of be available for those, uh, those variable start times. Um, there are opportunities for like, for example, the occasional, you know, um, shift switch, things like that. If you wanted to switch a shift with someone, you could do that, but it wouldn't be something that we'd recommend, um, if you would need to do that like weekly or all the time, because we, we can't guarantee that we'd be able to accommodate that. So, yeah. Okay. That is good to know. So at this point in time, it is full-time job. Mm -hmm. Um, do you check references as part of your process? We do. Um, so our reference check would be actually the next, um, if you're successful with the life story interview, the reference check would be the sort of um, final stage in the process. Um, and the reference check we do via a, um, it's kind of a third party online tool. So we don't check references in the traditional way where we contact the, um, you know, I, I wouldn't contact the, the former employers directly. What we do is we would send the candidate a link to upload information about their um, their references, uh, so their email address and all that kind of stuff. And then the tool, it's called XREF, uh, the tool would then send a form to the references to fill out. And there's just a, a series of questions that the reference would, would fill out. Um, and then they would submit it back to Shopify, and that's how, how, kind of how we go about it. Um, so, uh, yeah, and as far as who we ask for for references, this is also kind of a unique thing to the Junior Support Advisor because we, you know, we do have some students or, or, or folks who are new graduates who may not have a lot of um, experience uh, or, or, or references to give. Um, it doesn't have to always just be um employers like former employers we ask for one reference so we ask for two references total one would be um sort of any person you have worked with in a, in a that, that kind of has like a had a leadership type role so it could be a former employer it could be um a, a former professor or a former mentor um or things like that that's totally fine um you know and obviously if you do kind of go through the process and you ever have any questions about you know, who to give um, as a reference, you can talk to the recruiter that you're talking to and, and kind of run things by them. Um, so yeah, one person kind of in that sort of leadership um, capacity. And then the second reference can be a colleague or, or someone that you've kind of worked with um, that, that may not necessarily be a, a lead. Okay, so that's sort of the last step. So you're not doing any criminal background checks, credit checks? No. Any other checks? No, no other checks. That's it. Just the reference check. <laughs> Okay, that is great. Um, so you did mention that you are taking applications, but when would the role begin? So that's a great question. Um, and this is actually kind of a good thing to talk about because we, we are sort of in the middle of transitioning our program a little bit. So up until recently, we had consistent cohorts or, or you know, um, groups of folks starting at the same time. Um, and we had consistent cohorts every month. Um, that is looking like it may not be it may not be super consistent in the future. Um, so I can tell you now that the next start date that we're hiring for is March 22nd. Um, and we are only targeting folks in um, Western provinces. So this is great for all of you folks in, in Alberta. <laughs> um, so, yeah, anyone who is currently residing in um, Saskatchewan and West is who we're targeting. Um, I realize it would probably go that way for you guys anyway, you know, left or right, west. Um, so, um, so yeah, that, that's our next start date. And we do have a limited number of spots that we're filling for that, for that role. So I would suggest if you are interested in it, definitely get those applications in ASAP. 
uh, because we will start, um, you know, screening through folks probably pretty soon uh, within the next week or two, I'd say. Um, but the sooner, the better to, to give yourself the chance, because as I mentioned, we do get a lot of applicants. I mean, it is kind of, you know, a first come first serve basis um, in that regard. Um, as far as start dates, you know, moving forward, um, we, I can't guarantee that we're going to have like one in April, for example. We're still kind of in the middle of, of, of uh, reviewing our headcounts and, and our business need for, for that. Um, but I can definitely, you know, keep in touch with, with Lita and, uh, and other agency partners about that in the future. Um, but I, I guess I can say there will be other start dates after March. I just can't confirm them at this time. <laughs> No problem. It sounds like a good idea for people just to keep in touch with us because you'll keep us updated. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is really quite an entry level role. Is there any educational requirements? No. And that's what's great about this role. Um, so and also just about Shopify in general, again, like we don't necessarily look at, of course, we look at resumes and we look at experience and things like that, but we don't have a, a particular box that we want people to fit into in regards to work experience or, or educational experience. So um, no educational experience required at all. Um, I myself don't have a degree, you know, so so I've kind of gotten to where I am today uh, without any any formal um, educational background, which is which is cool. Um, so nothing required there at all. I would say probably the most important experience would be, um, you know, customer service experience is probably the most valued just because it is a customer service based role. But we do see folks from, you know, all over, um, you know, all sorts of uh, professional backgrounds or educational backgrounds applying, um, you know, because which is great because Shopify as a culture, we very much recognize that, you know, so many skills are transferable, right? So let's say you are a chef, right? Just because this isn't a role that is, you know, has anything to do with food or preparing food doesn't mean that the skills that you have as a chef wouldn't transfer into this role, right? So we definitely look at that kind of thing um, as, a, as a positive thing. We, we love seeing um, varied backgrounds, you know, folks who have multiple different um, roles that they've worked in or different experiences that they've taken different skills and experiences from. That's all great. We, we love to see that kind of well-rounded background for sure. Um, but there's no specific requirements we're looking at. Okay. So I know candidates do need to be 18. Yes. Um, do they have to have finished high school? Um, I mean, no, not necessarily. Um, yeah, I would say like as far as, so yeah, definitely 18. Um, that's kind of our, our company wide policy when it comes to that. So 18 and older, um, I would say so. No, they would not have to have finished high school. Um, obviously, if they're a current student, the schedule thing would come into play there. But um, but yeah, no, nope. great. Um, so there's a question from Carrie wanting to know if the if there's a wage that's hourly based or does it vary depending on experience? So maybe you could even provide us with a range there of what you pay for entry. Yes. So for, well, for this particular role, um, it is a, a set um, hourly wage of $16 an hour. Okay. That is great to know. And we have another question. Uh, someone was wondering if there's going to be any opportunities within other regions of Canada um, and what the start dates might be. <laughs> yeah. Great question. So can't, I can't confirm the start dates um, at this time, unfortunately. So definitely, um, uh, you know, keep in touch with your, um, the agency that you're working with, and we'll kind of be in touch about that. Um, there will definitely be uh, opportunities for other regions in Canada, for sure. Um, basically, we uh, we when we hire for junior support advisor, or up until recently, how we've hired is when we have a cohort, we will you know have a certain amount of folks that we're hiring for, and we like to um, split those cohorts into Canada West and Canada East. So we have what we hire a certain amount of people from those Western provinces and a certain amount of people from those Eastern provinces. And that's kind of like an even split. And the reason why we do that is because we want to give equal opportunity for everyone in Canada. Um, being an Ontario based company, we have a lot of Ontario based applicants, a lot. Um, so we could fill every single class from now until next year with Ontario based applicants but that wouldn't be giving opportunity for folks in Alberta, for example, or BC. Um, so that's kind of how we, we went about things um, up until now. 
Now what we've done is we're actually um, kind of alternating our cohorts. So, for example, our cohort starting in March is only going to be Canada West folks. But then our next cohort after that may only be Canada East folks um, or we may do one of each. We're not quite sure yet how that's going to work. But but yeah, long story short, absolutely. There will be opportunities for other folks in Canada for sure. Okay, that's good to know. Um, So I noticed there's lots of people popping questions up. I think that is wonderful. And if anybody feels like being brave enough to grab the mic, uh, they can. Uh, Jen mentioned you do have to be on camera to do the grab the mic, um, but we'd be happy for people to try that out as well. Um, So Chloe has a question. Would there be a cohort opening for the support advisor roles too? Yeah, so, um, yeah, we're definitely hiring for support advisors as well, a um, bit of a different role than the junior support advisor role. Um, maybe I can kind of give a, a quick little rundown of the differences between the two if people are wondering. So um, the support advisor role uh, is a role that has been around for a long time. It's how I started at Shopify. It is a, um, it's a full-time role as well, um, and it is a, a, a full-time position, meaning it's not a, a short-term contract, whereas the junior support advisor role is. So the junior support advisor role is a three-month contract to start. Um, we do see folks, and maybe I can kind of touch on this a little bit later, um, but yeah, we, we do see folks kind of move on from there and, and stay longer, but it is a three-month contract to start, Um, Whereas the support advisor role, um, you're hired as a full-time employee at that point. Um, And it is also a um, a salaried role uh, as opposed to an hourly wage. Um, So there there definitely will be or may be currently roles um, open for um, the support advisor role. I specifically work with the junior support advisor role. um, So I couldn't specifically confirm what what regions we're currently hiring for support advisor. But um, those those, uh, opportunities will be on our career site. Um, so I'd highly recommend checking out our careers um, uh, page and seeing if there's any open opportunities. If there aren't currently, that means, you know, we're currently closed for that region. But I would just recommend continue, you know, to, to keep up uh, looking at that careers page for when opportunities open up again. Sure. So did you want to talk about then opportunities for advancement? Sure. Yeah, I may as well. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So while the junior support advisor role is a three month contract to start, um, that doesn't mean that's, you know, it's kind of, that's it for, for you necessarily. Um, we have seen folks um, in the junior support advisor role um, essentially move on to second and third contracts. So essentially, um, it's a three-month contract to start. If all goes well and you're enjoying the position and you're doing well in the position, um, and, you know, our Shopify's business need requires that we still need folks, um, you know, on deck to, to help our merchants, then um, we would see folks get hired on for an additional three month contract. And then from there, um, again, you know, after that second three month contract, we evaluate and see what, what's going on. And then we'd essentially get to a, a, a third three month contract. So we see folks in the junior support advisor role from anywhere to six to nine months. Usually it's closer to nine just because, and that's kind of all across the board in Shopify. We, we think that we see that it normally takes about that amount of time to really get good at the job. You know what I mean? It's, it's a huge learning curve um, and it takes a while to kind of get used to things and start excelling. Um, after those nine months are up, um, we, we're just starting to see this now because we, our first sort of cohorts back in June are starting to kind of complete their nine month, um, you know, nine month period here. And we're seeing those folks move into full-time support advisor roles. Um, you know, there is potentially opportunity for people to move on for other, into other areas of the company, depending on their skill set or, or their background or their interests and things like that. So yeah, definitely lots of room for, for advancement. I mean, speaking on, um, you know, behalf of my own journey, I started at Shopify with zero experience in tech, in training, in, well, I shouldn't say training, but in, definitely in, in hiring and recruiting. Um, I've learned all of this on the job and Shopify is a super supportive environment for um, nurturing and, and sort of uh, helping their folks get into what roles they want to get into. So yeah, it's a very awesome environment. <laughs> That's great. Um, so could people apply to both? Yep. Absolutely. Yep. They can apply to as many as many um, roles as they want to uh, at Shopify for sure. Um, you know, the only thing with that is that, you know, we can't, let's say, 
Um, but like timelines, hiring timelines are different for each role, right? And we have specific teams hiring for specific roles. Um, we do communicate with each other, but, um, you know, let's say you get hired as a junior support advisor and then you say, oh no, actually I want to be a support advisor. Um, you know, we can't necessarily accommodate any like internal movement at, at that point. Um, but you know, it, I would say it's probably a, a good idea to apply for, for both if, if you, you know, feel like you um, meet the requirements. Um, I will say that the support advisor interview process and an application process is quite a, a bit um, more than the junior support advisor role. And it is quite a bit more competitive as well. Um, for the support advisor role, we're looking for folks who have, um, you know, uh, a lot of sort of seasoning, as we call it. So lots of, um, you know, experience in various different roles. We're looking for customer service experience. We're maybe looking for some technical experience as well. Um, so it may not be the best uh, fit for someone who is maybe a new graduate, for example, um, depending on obviously your, your work experience and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I would say apply and go for it for sure. Um, and, and kind of see where you go from, from there. And yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Is there a deadline to apply for the junior support advisor role? So currently there is not just because um, we, you know, I, I guess I can set a deadline now. I'm just, I, I mean, I would just say like as soon as possible, to be honest. Um, at, we do, we have done deadlines in the past, but what we've noticed is that if we give too long of a deadline, and because we get so many applicants, a lot of folks end up like not hearing back uh, for a while or, um, you know, may get, uh, yeah, may get pushed for folks who applied earlier. So I'm just going to say, Omar, your deadline to apply is tomorrow. <laughs> not actually, but I would say um, as soon as possible, because we're hiring for a March 22nd start date. Um, I'm just going to look at the calendar here because I want to just see. So we are at the February 10th. So I'm probably going to be starting interviews for that role um, as early as next week. Okay. So let's say it would be wise to get your application in by the end of this week. So by Sunday. Okay, good to know. And uh, good to know you might be keeping us busy too. <laughs> um, so we've got a couple of very um, hard-looking questions here, which is good. Are you ready, um, Stephanie? I'll try my best. <laughs> <laughs> Shopify did heighten its business during COVID stage. How is Shopify planning to maintain this in the next few years? Long-term girls. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I think that, you know, it's kind of one of those things where businesses now being, you know, forced to, to, to be online, um, I don't see us reverting back to kind of old ways, just not even just with Shopify in general, but as, as the world, you know, progresses into that sort of technical space when it comes to online shopping, e-commerce as a whole, that's the direction the world is, is taking, you know, um, that's not to say that, you know, your brick and mortar or your physical locations are going to become obsolete. I think there are some folks who would, who would say that, right? Like e-commerce is the future and there's never going to be any online stores. We're going to be shopping online. Could be. Obviously, I don't have a time machine. I don't know. Um, but I think it's safe to say that we're very much so trending to, to kind of see that be the norm. Um, so, you know, folks who maybe had a brick and mortar location and were forced to only operate online um, are seeing that they can be successful online, just almost as successful, if not more successful than their brick and mortar store. So let's say COVID ends and that, folk, that that person has the opportunity to go back into their physical space to sell. I would be very surprised if those folks wouldn't continue to sell online as well because they're still making more money, right? Why wouldn't you double your profit? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm not an expert in the matter by any means, but I think just working for the company as long as I have you know, being an online shopper myself, I'm sure a lot of you folks, if not all of you folks, have bought something online before and know that that's kind of the direction things are taking. Um, I, I definitely see it as, as being a, a consistent thing. So. Okay. So Amber has a question around a software development role at Shopify. 
Um, I'm not sure if you have a lot of knowledge about that or if maybe we want to take her question offline and try and find that out for her. Yeah, so um, great question. Yeah, I'm definitely not uh, part of that team uh, for hiring for that role. As I mentioned, we do have specific roles hiring for, for, for different, you know, um, aspects of the company. But um, based on my, like, very limited knowledge, um, I believe oh my God, CSS is the language that Shopify uses uh, for their theme developments and things like that. I believe that's what it is, if I'm thinking of that correctly. So CSS would be a, a, a definitely an asset. Um, but, um, you know, I, I don't want to say that that's the only language that's used. To be honest, I'm not sure. So um, if Amber emails me, could we connect and you could maybe find out? I can try for sure. I think it may vary depending on the, the role. Um, I think, you know, yeah, certainly I can, I can give it a go and see what I can find out. I think also when it comes to roles like that, again, those roles will be posted on the careers site. And each of those roles will have that requirement in the job posting itself. So if you see a role that you like in the careers page, and you see, you know, that the requirement is a certain, they'll, they'll have those, those language requirements on there. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm trying to uh, type in my email address and talk, listen to you at the same time. That's just <laughs> not Anyhow, uh, we have another question here. What is the process of moving within the company? So how does that work? Like, do you get to talk with your supervisor about where you'd like to go or... How does that work? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, as I kind of mentioned before, super, super supportive environment for, for growth. Um, we prefer to promote internally. Um, so the majority of the folks who work at Shopify started at a support advisor or junior support advisor level. Um, the reason why we do that is because at the end of the day, Shopify is here and we're successful because of our merchants. If we didn't have merchants, we wouldn't have a business. We wouldn't be who we are. Um, so we really prefer to promote from within because we like all of our folks to have that one-on-one -on -one experience working with our merchants and get to know what they need, what they want, um, you know, and, and take that into other roles within the company. So um, as far as like what the process would be like, absolutely your lead will be um, sort of an, a very important part of that. Your lead will have regular meetings with you, one-on-ones to discuss not only like how you're doing currently in the role that you're in, right? Any areas of opportunity that you may have, things like that. Um, they're going to make sure that you're, you know, being the best that you can within that role itself. But they're also going to be asking you, hey, what do you what do you want to do from here? What are your interests? What, like, where can you see yourself being? Um, and they'll help you nurture that. So they'll say, cool. Uh, so, for example, I'm going to use my own experience because I, I feel like that's the best way of going about it. So when I first started as a support advisor, I had no clue what I wanted to do, where I wanted to be. No idea. And my lead was the one who was like, we need to, like, where do you want to go? Do you want to be a support advisor for your whole life? And some people do, and that's great. I, I identified that I did not want to be, um, and I wanted to kind of move on from there. So he said, okay, let's start figuring out where your areas of interest are. And he, you know, kind of would give me some suggestions. Like, I could see you doing this, or I could see you being great at this. And eventually I kind of, you know, settled on mentoring. I wanted to mentor folks. I wanted, I had such a challenge learning the role when I first started because I didn't have much of a technical background. So it just, and I'm, you know, so, so I, and I wanted to help folks through that process. I wanted to, you know, help them be the best that they can be. So I told my lead that he said, okay, let's set up some meetings with folks on that team. Let's uh, figure out what sorts of skills that you may need to kind of like give yourself a leg up when applying for those roles. He had me mentor folks on my own team um, to kind of get that one-on-one -on -one mentoring experience. So by the time it came for me to apply for the role, I had this experience to kind of, to, to kind of leverage myself. And that's definitely a very common thing that happens at Shopify, okay. which is great. So I noticed um, we're getting a lot more questions and running out of time. Do you have time to stay on? Yeah, I, yeah, I have to okay. for sure. Yeah, no worries. Okay, good, because I'd like to be able to answer. Um, so... Uh, Navnish was wondering about dealing with negativity or like stress from the position of offering that customer or merchant support. Like, do you guys provide strategies for people um, to deal with that? For sure. I mean, we're also, we're very, um, you know, we're, we're at Shopify, we're, we're advocates for, you know, 
overall, like mental health, well-being, all that kind of thing, we, we definitely recognize that being in a frontline support role is not easy. Um, I can, you know, firsthand experience, I know it's not easy. It's not an easy job talking to people um, who, who may, you know, who you may have to have difficult conversations with. Um, so we have lots of sort of um, things in place in regards to um, uh, resources within the company, um, you know, people to talk to. Your lead is probably going to be one of your biggest resources there for sure. Um, it's a very open environment to talk about those kind of things with. So for example, let's say you have a really, um, you know, tricky conversation with someone and, and you get off the chat and you're like, man, I just, I feel drained or I feel, you know, I was, I was impacted by that. Um, you know, you can talk to your lead about that and they may say, you know what, take 15 minutes, go make yourself a coffee, get off live channel, just take a break. Like we're, we're, we, we're not the type of environment where we want to work people to the bone to the point where they are being negatively impacted by it. So I think the important thing to remember there um, is if, if you're not being open about your needs and, and, the, and the, you know, your potential struggles that you're going through, we can't help. So I would say the most important thing is being open and honest about what you need to be able to do your job the best you can, um, and, and communicating that to your lead and, and, you know, um, they'll help you seek out resources to help you with that. That being said, I do also want to, um, highlight that this is certainly a role that does require um, some resiliency as well. You know, it is a role that that will you will have difficult conversations. You will have folks who are frustrated with you because maybe you don't have an answer for them right away. Um, so there is an element like of, of folks needing to be able to take on those those conversations and not necessarily um, need to step away after every single conversation like that. And that, that kind of thing is also like something that we learn, right? Like myself, I remember when I first started in the role, it took me a bit of time to bounce back from those conversations. But the, the, the more I, I, I had that experience, I got tougher, I got more resilient, and I was able to take that on. Um, but I just want to kind of set that expectation that it's, you know, we're absolutely here to support and any anything um, that is needed in regards to that. But we definitely, um, you know, at the end of the day, the, the merchants do still need to get helped. Um, so we do need to kind of see that, that resiliency as well. Okay. Um, so someone's wanting to know if you think that there's going to be some hiring happening after the post-secondary school year. I know I, you don't know, yeah, but I can't guarantee, but I would be very surprised if we didn't. So yeah, I, I can't guarantee May. I can't, I can't, I don't know if it would be May, but I, um, we, we certainly have, we have no plans on stopping like the stopping of hiring for this role. Um, I just can't guarantee exactly which which months they'll be, but yeah, I would say we'd, we'll definitely have some some start dates in the summer for sure. Okay, that's good. Um, Pawarna was wanting to know uh, about entrepreneurial skills. If something like that is valuable for Shopify, absolutely, yes, for sure. We love seeing entrepreneurial skills. Um, anyone with entrepreneurial entrepreneurial experience is is huge. At the end of the day, I mean, our merchants that's what they're doing. So being able to, you know, having um, junior support advisors who can connect with our merchants on that sort of entrepreneurial level is such a great thing. Um, it's definitely not a requirement, but it's 100% a great, a great um, skill to, to bring in for sure. Okay. And Emily had a question. I answered it a little bit in the chat, but Emily was wondering about having a youth employment center counselor as a reference. I said, first, you got to check in with your counselor, but would that be an okay reference? Yeah. Yeah. You can use them as, I believe that would be, that would be more of a, like your secondary reference yeah. um, as opposed to like that sort of person, sort of the leadership capacity, but you can absolutely use them as a secondary reference for sure. Okay. So uh, my clock says it's 2.59. <laughs> and I think we've actually addressed all the questions that are there. Awesome. Ooh, phew. Down the wire. If anything comes up, you know, you can always email me. I've put my email on there a whole bunch of times. So I'm happy to try and get those questions answered or connect um, can, you know, connect with Stephanie to get those answered. All right. Um, but thank you very much for joining us today. Um, hopefully we'll be putting this up on our YouTube soon as well. So if you've got any friends that maybe wanted to come to this event, they can watch it on there. 
Um, and you can always log back in to run the world too uh, for the next few days uh, here and to watch a to watch a recording. So um, thank you very much. We're actually having another um, event like this virtual spotlight on the 23rd with about staffing. Uh, for folks that are interested in that, you can just look on our website to find out the information and get signed up for that. All right. Well, I think we'll just say goodbye for now. Um, and yeah, keep those questions coming. Connect with your counselor, whatever you need to do. Um, thank you very much. And bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>